Today we're going to put everything we learned together and create a short little prototype of a little fake app that we've made together. Now, if you've watched my previous video and followed along, we made these screens together. I'm going to link that somewhere here. If you want to just stop this video, do that quickly and jump in here. Or if you'd rather just learn about prototyping in your exercise file, you've got these screens ready to go. So let's jump in. In the file, you can see we've got all of these screens set up for us. We have a home screen, a gallery, a map, and then we've got a little about pop-up. Uh, we've got some styles set up. I set up these styles in our color session, in our typography session, where we learn how to build a design system. I'll link those videos as well. There's so much content to go and look at if you haven't already. Um, but today, again, prototyping. The first interaction I want us to look at is Navigate 2. Now, Navigate 2 is just the basic interaction of you click on something and navigates you to a different place. Let's jump straight in. So if I look at my button over here and I go to prototype, you see the interaction section is right now grayed out because there's nothing there. If I click on plus, it's gonna create this row for us and you can add multiple interactions. There could be one interaction on a click, on a hover, on a drag, anything you want. But if I tap on here, it's gonna say on click, I want it to do something. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to navigate to, and I'm gonna tell it where I wanted to navigate to. So gallery button needs to navigate to gallery great now once i've done that you see this this is called a noodle um and this is just something that tells us there is a connection between this frame and this frame yes this button is a frame and over here we've got this which is a flow now, if i click on the canvas and i'm on the prototype you see there's one flow here and it's called flow number one i'm going to double click it to change the name and i'm going to say my app um and you just got got that going for you here um and what that means is that i've this is one starting point of my prototype. If you've got loads of screens and loads of different starting points, you can create different flows. This is just one flow for me now. I'm gonna do the same with the map. Now you can work with noodles. I'm gonna put one little asterisk here and say, if you've got a massive design file with loads going on, I would not recommend doing this. I would recommend always going from your prototype panel because it could get really messy. But essentially you can grab this noodle here and just drag it to the map frame and it creates on click navigate to map. Okay. I want us to just see this happen now. So if I click on the play, it's just gonna pop up over here. So I've got my prototype. If I click on gallery, it's gonna go to gallery. I can't go back yet. So I'm gonna click on R on my keyboard to restart. If I click on map, it goes to map. Yay! But um, it doesn't look great and, and we can't go back. So I'm gonna click on this noodle here and get some interaction going. So my animation right now is instant. Let's make it dissolve maybe. So you can kind of see a preview of what it's gonna be like. Uh, you've got move in from any direction. You could do slide in. Um, and I'm gonna use dissolve for now. And I'm gonna do it for both. I'm gonna click on this one and say dissolve. Now you can play around with it, ease in, ease out, you know, the, the all of that gentle, quick, they're really fun to play around with. But for now, we're gonna stick to really basic, use ease out and dissolve. If I go into my screens now, I'm gonna click on R again and you can just see that kind of how it dissolves backwards and forwards, already getting so much prettier. Now I wanna do the same for the home. So I'm gonna use this one and say, when I click on this home, now remember we have a vector inside of a frame. So I want the, frame to be the one that's prototype and not the vector because this is quite small so I want the actual frame that's a bit bigger. I'm going to add an interaction say on click navigate to and I want it to navigate to home but because I'm on home right now I won't be able to do it so I need to do it from a different one. So let's say from this one um, I'm going to click on my home icon and say interaction click navigate to and then home. Now, once that is set up, I don't need to do this multiple times. What I can do is I can copy this. So I'm copying this nav bar, command C, and then I'm gonna select the others and I'm gonna right click and say paste to replace. And this is just gonna replace them with the one that I've copied over. Now I've got that going for me. When I click on prototype, I can see all of the connections. It's already starting to get messy. Um, so let's just look at this happening right now. If I go into my prototype, I click on home, it goes there, map, Home, gallery, home, wonderful. We've done Navigate 2 and that was so simple. Um, but the next thing I wanna show you is Open Overlay. Now an overlay is like a pop-up. It's something that sits on top of your design rather than a new design altogether. And let's see how that works. So if you remember from making these screens together, if you did, or if you're just looking at it now, you can see that About is smaller than my actual frame. If I go back to design, About is 360 and my actual frame is 390 in width. So this kind of sits on top. So I want it to open as an overlay on my about button and say on click open overlay 
and then I'm gonna select my overlay that's called about. Now you see I've got a different interface here because it's an overlay. First of all, I can say where it is. So is it going to be centered in my screen? Is it gonna be top left? Is it gonna be bottom center? Now these three are kind of surface because they're the most common ones. Bottom left is usually, you know, that burger menu that comes up and the bottom, a lot of times you've got like a sheet they're called sometimes in mobile where they come under. But over here you can also select whichever you want. You can also select a manual placement where you actually get to like decide where it's going to go. So you see it's gonna bring it here and that's just where it's gonna go. But I'm gonna say centered is fine for me. Now I want you to make sure with these tick boxes that you select both of them. I wanna add a background behind the overlay. So that's gonna add that black behind it. So there's a difference between my design and this overlay. Um, and also click when closing outside. I don't have a close button on my pop-up if you've noticed. So I just want them to click somewhere and it will close. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a little animation. I'm gonna say maybe move in and I want it to move in from the bottom. Yeah, and maybe let's keep it on ease out for now. If I go into my prototype and notice I don't need to restart it. It keeps, it's really dynamic. It just keeps changing whatever I do. So if I click on about, that just came from the bottom and you can see I've got that black line and I can click out and it will close. And notice as well, the closing kind of um, mimics the entering. So if the entering was coming in from the bottom, the closing will be going back down to the bottom. I wanna just show you what these ones do. So if I'm gonna use Bouncy, which is my favorite, you can also see it happening in here. Uh, but if I click on about, you see it kind of does that thing. It's, it's a bit manic sometimes. But let's use gentle and you can see it kind of gives a little bit of a, you know, it kind of settles in. So let's use gentle. And then this read more button is not doing anything for now. So that's fine. The next thing I want to look at is overflow behavior. Now overflow behavior is just a fancy way of saying scrolling, right? So we've got a lot of scrolling that could potentially happen here. Let's see how it works. Uh, I'm going to go back to design just so we can get rid of the noodles for a second. The first thing that we know we need to be able to scroll is to see this text, right? I've got loads of text that's going outside of my frame. Now, just a reminder, if you've been to my frame session, you know, but when you click on a frame, right now it's clipping its content, which means that everything that's outside of the bounding box, you won't be able to see. If I unclick this, you can now see the end of this image and also the text at the bottom. I'm gonna clip again so we don't see them. So I wanna be able to see the rest of that text. Now this text sits inside of this frame. So when you're thinking of scrolling, you always need to think about the parent that it sits in, right? So the parent, which is the whole frame, uh, needs to be able to scroll for us to be able to see the rest of this text. So if I click on gallery and go into prototype, you see I've got an interaction here, but I don't need an interaction. I need overflow scrolling. Right now there's no scrolling, but I want vertical scrolling, right? So if I click on vertical scrolling, I go into my prototype again, click on gallery. Now I'm gonna scroll, ooh. It's good, but I don't want this to disappear, right? I don't want the navigation bar to stay there. So we can fix its position while scrolling. It lives inside of constraints. Uh, I guess it's cause it's kind of a constraint as well, but essentially over here you see it says fixed position when scrolling. And I want you to look at the layers panel. When I tick this, suddenly the layers panel inside of the gallery frame has gotten this little kind of subtitle that says fixed and one that says scrolls. So navbar is in fixed. And what that means is if I go back into here, you see it stays in its position. It stays where it is when you're scrolling. All right, now let's try and figure this one out. So remember how we said we need to look at the parent of the item in order to see what needs that scroll behavior. So this photo gallery is inside of a frame, which means it can have its own overflow scrolling behavior. So I need it to scroll, you know, left to right, right? So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go to scrolling and select horizontal scrolling. Let's see if that works for us. I'm gonna just scroll to the top. Okay, it works, but right? Something isn't quite right here. So let's try and see how we can fix it. So if I go into prototype right now, you'll see that I've got a little warning. And if I hover over this warning, you'll see that the warning says for scrolling to work on this frame, the content needs to be bigger than the frame. And that's why it's not working right now. It's saying the content is the same size. So what am I scrolling exactly, right? So what I'm going to do in order to fix that is I'm going to make this the frame the same size as the screen. I'm just going to grab it from the side here and just make it you know, touch the side. And then you see that now that warning is gone. When I go into here, 
suddenly it works and it's great, right? If I wanna do one more thing in order to fix it, just cause we're really pedantic, you can see when you scroll all the way here, this lovely picture is quite on the edge and I want to give that that extra 15 pixels of margin, right? So what I can do in order to fix that is I can give myself the same margin I have on the left on the right as well. So I'm just gonna make this frame 15 pixels smaller. Um, so I know that it needs to be 15 on each side, so it just needs to be 360. There we go. So that could be enough for us right now because if we go in here, it does kind of do that. But one more thing that we can do if we want is we can clip content and then that means that that is the area that the gallery stays in. Um, and that creates kind of this effect where you see it chops it off here rather than on the edge of the screen. And this depends what kind of look and feel you're going for. I'm just gonna show that difference again. If it's not cropped, it means that it goes over it. So you see this can be all the way to the edge here and all the way to the edge here. But if we do clip its content, it kind of stays within that 360 width. So you can see it just kind of stays there. I'm gonna keep it like this. The last bit of overflow behavior that I wanna show you is kind of all of the above. Now, if I go into here, I've got this map. Now maps, if we wanted to make it feel really real, you wanna be able to move around inside of the map, right? You wanna be able to kind of go up, go down and not just go one direction like we did before. So I'm gonna go into prototype and I'm gonna say, first of all, I need to fix my navigation bar so it doesn't move, right? So I'm gonna go into here and say fix fix and scrolls and then my frame I'm going to prototype and I'm going to use my overflow behavior on horizontal and vertical scrolling by going to my prototype home and map look at that now my map is quite small I used a plugin called mapsicle and it brought in a 500 by 1000 pixel map but if you want you can bring in a much bigger map and then you can just kind of play around with it and move it around from side to side but already this is giving a really real feeling so we've just created a little mini prototype. There's one more thing I want us to do and that's set up our prototype environment. Now, if I click on my canvas, and which means I'm not selecting anything, you can see on the right here, I can set a device, a background. So I'm gonna select a device. I know that my frames are using iPhone 14, so I'm gonna choose that one. And I want them to be the purple one, because I like purple, have you noticed? And I don't want a black background. I wanna give it the same color as my brand color from my design system that I created in my previous videos. Now, you can't select a style from here, but what you can do is you can just drop a frame into, this is what I usually do. I just just click on R, drop a frame, give it uh, the color that I want. So let's say I want it to have kind of my brand uh, color, maybe a lighter shade, a darker shade of my brand color. So maybe this one uh, and then go to prototype and then over here, just use the eyedropper tool to select it. Perfect. And now this means that when I go into my prototype now, it's going to be set inside of a phone. I'm going to click on Z to just make it a bit smaller. Look at that. So cool. It looks even more real now, right? I've got this scroll behavior, this scroll behavior. I can click on my map and move around. I can click on about. And also you see once I've selected my prototype device and I've set up my design environment, you see I don't have a pointer anymore like I did before. I've got this little circle like you would on a phone. And also when I click on one of my noodles, it's not on click anymore, it's on tap because it knows we're on a phone. Okay, Figma is so smart, it's so smart. So that is it. We've basically in such a short session created a little mini app. And if you've got the Figma app on your phone downloaded, you can also click on one of these frames and then mirror it to your phone or play this flow called my app. And you can just click on your phone and it feels like a, a real app. It is, It look, it doesn't do much, but it is, it works. And it's a really amazing way of just seeing your designs come to life or showing them to someone. Feel free to play around even more. We only looked at on click, but you have on drag um, and you have all these other things in there. You can swap an overlay, uh, you can delay it. We will have more videos later on, uh, which will be more advanced prototyping, looking at smart animate and how you can use components to swap their properties in between, uh, which is super, super cool and saves you so much time. So watch the space for that. I hope you were able to follow along and enjoyed the session. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.